mum of three and TV presenter Emma Willis is on her way to start another shift at the Princess Alexandra Hospital. I've been back there three weeks now. Uh, I'm feeling tired. <laughs> I forget what long days they are and how all-consuming it is because it's constant focus and constant focus on things that are really important because it's people's health. <laughs> Emma has been working 12-hour shifts and up to 40 hours a week as a qualified maternity care assistant. Aside from the immense tiredness I have, it's amazing to be back. It's really, it's really great to be doing that job again and it's really lovely to be around the team that I knew. And it's also really nice to meet new people that I didn't know. I'm making new friends. Is that one done now? One more. One more. One more. It's another hot morning and the start of a busy day for Emma. We pray for the heat, don't we? And then it comes and we go, Ooh, nope, <laughs> don't want the heat anymore. It's really hot. <laughs> Yay. They're all done, all cleaned, ready. <laughs> ready for the next wave. It's vital that all the empty beds are ready for the next batch of labouring mums. I'm hot now. Yay. Water. With around 10 babies born at the maternity unit every day, none of its beds remain empty for long. You got this, you're doing really well. Just breathe through it. 27-year-old Larissa, who is three days overdue, has just arrived. At her side is her fiancé, 26-year-old George. Nearly done. <laughs> oh, God, love me to go, haven't you? <laughs> Optimal thinking, isn't it? Due to high blood pressure, Larissa has been induced and she's in the early stage of labour. Hello. Hi, yeah. How are you doing? I'm Emma, I'm the MCA on today. You feeling all right? Yeah, I'm doing well. Doing yeah. well yeah. What kind of stage are you at at the minute? Um, I'm only one centimetre dilated at the moment. It yeah. gave me the pessary. Is this baby number one? Number yeah. one. So, yeah. yeah. And how are you feeling about what is about to happen? So I'm really looking forward to it. It's a bit different for you, but... I'm just more worried about her, really. <laughs> what are you worried about the most? I don't know, just, I can't really help. So I'm just, I'm kind of just like trying to seem like I'm useful. <laughs> I always feel for the woman because I know what she's about to go through, yeah. but I really feel for the partners as well because all you want to do is help, take yeah. that pain away, do something, be useful. Yeah. And really all you can do is just sit there and... Just ask if you're all right. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. I've known Larissa for about six, seven years now. We used to be really good friends at work, both in retail. We'd always sort of like crack jokes and that. And I'm sort of, I'm a person that makes a lot of jokes when they're nervous. And so maybe that kind of eased it. But um, Larissa's going to be an amazing mum. I mean, there's no doubt she's going to smash it. I'll just see if I can't mess up. Well, if you do need anything, press your buzzer and, and we'll be around. Perfect. All right, see you in a bit. Right, see you later. She's fantastic. She's the epitome of what you want to look like when you're in the early stages of labour, I think. I think she said she's only one centimetre and I remember screaming. I was like, oh, I'm sure, I'm sure it's about to come out. They were like, you're a centimetre. What? <laughs> so she's doing a damn sight better than I did. Hospitals across the UK, like the Princess Alexandra, are in the grip of a national staffing crisis with a shortage of 2,000 midwives in England alone. To help relieve the pressure, there's a plan to upskill the maternity unit's MCAs. As soon as Nikki arrives and I've introduced her, I'm gonna go off with Emma. Emma has been asked to meet with her supervisor, practice development midwife, Claire. Hey, Claire. Hello. Shall we go and have a chat? Oh, Next yeah. Door? It's a good chat, right? Let's go and see how things are going. Super. Emma is currently working as a level two MCA, but soon she'll be expected to work towards a level three qualification. Ooh. Oh, that feels nice, doesn't it? So how have things been? It's lovely to be back. Everyone's been 
very welcoming and helpful. It's been quite overwhelming at times. Yes, it's bound to be. Yeah. Yes. Last time I was here, the one thing that still scared me was theatre, and it was mm. something that I really wanted to make sure I knew and felt yeah. comfortable in. Um, and I think I almost got there last time, but now there's been such a big yeah. chunk of time away, obviously. Oh. When, when it's not your natural habitat, yeah. Um, and it's, you know, an operation, and it's pretty serious. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> you I understand. Who looks like they don't know what they're doing, even yeah. though I am the one that doesn't really know what they're doing. I know you felt like a little bit of a deer in the headlights for the first time that when you went in, but, you know, you need to be writing on the board, you need to be doing your instrument count and, and getting your sutures out ready, your blades, make sure they're all there, that the um, scrub nurse has got everything she needs. Sounds like a lot, especially mm -hmm. coming back after all this time, but... It is what you're here to do. So basically, yeah. you, you need to start, you know, pushing yourself forward a little bit to actually do the role, not just watching. Because, I mean, that is, that's what you're here for. That's the job at the end of the day. Is that okay? Yeah. You I mean, you're tell me, Claire, and I'll do it. <laughs> I mean, you're doing great. You're Anything doing great. You. <laughs> it's early days, but yeah. you just need to, you, you know, you need to start to Stop just look at the scared. next. Stop being scared, yeah. exactly. You've Stop done it before. Stop being scared. I can do this. You can, you can yeah. though. You've done it before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Claire is a lovely woman who just wants to make sure that everybody is feeling okay and, and comfortable and confident. I'm sure I'll be banging on your door you know going, where I am. Help. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> just let me know. Thanks, All right. All right. Take care. See you later. Bye. Bye. And I kind of get at the end that it's a right crack on then now because we need to move you to level three. <laughs> So I guess that's what I better do. Crack on. Emma is about to put her newfound determination to the test. This afternoon, she's assisting at a planned caesarean birth. It feels kind of surreal that mm -hmm. the moment is almost here now. Yeah, yeah. Waiting to meet their third child, our lawyers, 42-year-old Oleladi and 43-year-old Adekunle. About to have your body back. Yes! Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't go. wait for that. After previous vaginal births, they're now having a planned caesarean with their third. Hello! Hi. Due to their baby lying sideways. Hi. Is it time? It's almost time. Almost time. time. So close. So close, all right. Yeah, how are you? Good. Ready to go and yeah. get this done. Yeah. The couple met seven years ago, and the connection was instant. We met in Lagos uh, through a friend of ours. We have a mutual friend. We met at a party, and then um, we exchanged numbers, and we started talking afterwards. Went, to, went on a couple of dates, and um, here we are. You good? Yes, I am. She has a very big heart. She's, she's a wonderful woman. She's a wonderful woman, and I love her. With two little girls at home, family life is a top priority. I love being a dad. I'm very close with my children, my two girls. We have a very strong bond, and I look forward to being an awesome dad to my boy. Ola Ladra, I have to warn you, yes. this wheelchair got a life of its own. You will go easier if you go backwards. Yeah, it's all right. I mean, you can look at each other that way. <laughs> yes. A key part of an MCA's job in theatre is to support and reassure the families. Okay. Yeah. All right. Bit um, butterflies. Yeah. 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 It's quite an intimidating place to come into. Isn't yeah, it? it's just a lot of lights. Yeah. Gadgets. Gadgets, wires, beeps. Yeah. But there's a lot of amazing people in here. Yeah. I see that. She's in good hands. While Emma is still being supervised by theatre practitioner Natalie... Did you want to do the counts? Yeah. Today is her chance to step up and take the lead. OK. Forceps, Ramsey's tooth and non-tooth. It is essential Emma ensures that all surgical instruments are accounted for at the beginning and end of the operation. Uh, forceps, Dunhill. Three, four, four five, five, six, six seven, seven, eight, eight nine, nine, ten. ten. That's it. I'm going to write them on the board now. So, five small. So, we've got five small. Five abdo. Five abdos. And four, four sutures. Two, two blades. blades. And that's it. Yay! 
Okay. And that's it, all done already. Okay, we're ready. For the first time, Emma is also taking on the job of keeping a running log of the key events. So now they're just about to do knife to uterus and she'll call her. That's it, and then you write the time. 15.09. The baby is lying sideways across the uterus, a rare presentation seen in less than 1% of cases. So this time they've not gone straight in with the suction for the Lycor because it's actually really bloody. Can you see? It's very dark. Normally it just come out clear, um, but obviously she must be bleeding quite a bit. The position of the baby is making the operation more complex, and the surgeon must make a larger incision than usual. They're struggling to get baby out. And now, Olalade is bleeding heavily. So each second that passes is critical. This is not what she needs. The team need to get the baby out and fast. She's just getting ready to put out an emergency ball just in case. This one goes here. For the first time in three years, MCA Emma is taking the lead in theatre. That's in. But the surgery isn't going to plan. I've not seen this before, so... No wrapping. Bella. Mum of two, Olalade, is having her third child in an elective caesarean. So not good. Yeah. The baby's sideways position makes the birth more difficult. They're just trying to get the head out now. Minutes after Emma recorded the first incision, Olalade's baby is born. Baby out. Yeah. Double two, double two, please. Uh, yes. Yeah. But while the caesarean has been a success, the baby is unresponsive. The baby is immediately given oxygen to help him breathe. Is he, is he all right? Okay. 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 If the baby remains unresponsive, resuscitation will begin. All Olalade and Adekunle can do is wait. And I said, yep, 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 you don't hear him. Oh, yeah, see him now. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's it, that's it, that's it. Yep. Buddy, look at you. You want to see mommy now, huh? I love my darling. Mama's boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. He's beautiful. Yeah. So gorgeous. Just like his dad. Yeah. yeah. Just like his dad. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel okay? Yeah. Yeah. You're perfect. You've got him. You're perfect. Thank you so much. He's gorgeous. I haven't done anything. Thank you. Just been writing. <laughs> Thank you. Everyone has been so amazing. Yeah, everyone has been extremely. It's great to have that Very good bunch in here. Yeah. Fantastic bunch. Fantastic bunch. I'll catch up with you in a bit. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm like, I'm really overwhelmed by what just happened.
I've never seen an emergency in theatre before. All you want to do is panic, yet everybody around you, all the true professionals are absolutely calm. <laughs> so you don't want to be the only one flapping in the corner. Um, and then just loads of people turn up and everybody just does what they do. And it's like a brilliantly choreographed dance. Especially for no sleep as well. Right. Baby's got hiccups, so it's <laughs> calmed down a little bit. On the antenatal ward is first time mum Larissa, who was induced 24 hours ago. Hey. But her labour hasn't progressed. You're still here. Still How are you doing? Here. Oh. All right. It's a long process. Some people are lucky that it happens so quickly. Yeah. Not everyone's that lucky. You can get really frustrated with it, but then you have to just... Yeah, there's literally nothing you can do. Th there's nothing you can do. You just have to kind of go with it. and Because mm -hmm. the more you kind of get stressed and anxious, you don't know kind of what, if that's going to stop what's yeah, happening or... You look yeah. very calm yeah. still. I'm just taking each hour as it comes. Yeah. How about you, George? Um, I'm fine, I'm not really doing any hard work, so... <laughs> You're doing a very good back rub, though. Yeah. The only person that knows what's going on is that one in there. <laughs> yeah. That's the boss. Yeah, that is the boss. <laughs> I'm in here, yeah, yeah it's the boss, yeah. Larissa and George have got that look in their eyes of... We thought it was all going to be over by now. <laughs> but you just cannot predict what babies want to do. But she's very calm, she's super focused. And George is very good at back rubbing. So together, they're, they're a perfect pairing for birth. Oh my gosh, have we done it? Have we done them all? <laughs> As the day is drawing to a close, the team is preparing to hand over to the night shift. Bye. See you, bye. Larissa prepares for her second night on the Chamberlain ward. I'll leave these in your thingy bag. Keep all the snacks. That's the important stuff. Covid rules only permit partners of women in active labour to remain overnight. George has to go home. Hello. Just bring her, yeah? Too soon. yeah? I'll keep going. Right. Well, I don't like leaving her on her own, but she's in the best place, so hopefully there's some progress when I come back, whatever time that ends up being. I'm tired, I'm excited, but obviously, like, God knows how she's feeling. She's done all the work and gone through all the pain, so she's going to be feeling it more than I am. Good evening, midwife speaking. It's 11pm, and newly qualified midwife, 31-year-old Corin... OK. ..has just started a night shift. No problem. Come to the birthing unit entrance and we'll see you there. All right, see you in a bit. Bye. With three individual suites for women with uncomplicated pregnancies, the unit offers a more intimate birthing experience. Dun, dun, dun. My pen. Corin is hoping on this shift, she'll celebrate a personal milestone, bringing a 20th baby into the world. Every birth for me is really important. It feels like an adrenaline rush. It feels like a drug that you can't buy off the market. Um, and it's something that I'm addicted to and it makes me fall in love every single shift with the job that I do. Second time mum Nicola arrived on the birthing unit only an hour ago with partner Aaron and is already in the final stage of labour. Oh. 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 
I see. Carry on playing billiard. Uh, Because I think baby said it's coming. It feels like it. Yeah. Do you want to light yourself? Mm. So it is very common for women to have their babies really quickly when it's not their first baby. I had a lady in the birthing unit uh, a couple of shifts ago. She came in at 1.16 in the morning and she delivered her baby 10 minutes later. So she came in at the right time. Nicola and Aaron have been together for 10 years. Brilliant breathing, Nicola. Brilliant breathing. Me and Nicola met uh, on holiday in Gran Canaria. There was a bar just around the corner to the hotel. So I was in there one night and Nicola was there with her friends. And then that's how we, we got chatting. Relax, Carla. Sorry. Trust your body, okay? She's just amazing. She's a natural mum as well, and uh, yeah, she's a very caring person. The couple are already parents to their toddler, Rex. We had Rex three years ago, tomorrow. So uh, it's possible they could share the same birthday or <laughs> be very close. He's a little ch cheeky chappy. The thing I'm most looking forward to is uh, watching them play together. The birth is progressing rapidly, and midwife Corin must monitor Nicola at every phase. Just my HB was one one four. During a really quick delivery, you're constantly just looking down to see: is it time that I call someone? What needs to happen? If I leave this any longer, she may end up losing liters. In the birthing unit, second time parents Nicola and Aaron are getting ready to meet their new son. Nicola, trust your body. Trust your okay. Body. All right. Yeah. You've gotten yourself here. You've done amazing. Newly qualified midwife Corin has now been joined by experienced midwife Claire. Brilliant baby, Nicola. Brilliant baby. Oh, amazing. Congratulations. Snort the 60. Bosh. <laughs> <laughs> You've done amazing. Well done. Well done. Amazing. Hi. Happy birthday. Got a squashed little head like Rex head as well. Didn't manage to nick his birthday either. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see what Rex makes him initially sharing his time with another little and I'm not too sure how he's going to take that. <laughs> oh, bless her. <laughs> Corin's work is not quite over. That was quick, wasn't it? As during the birth, Nicholas suffered a perineal laceration. Might be just a, a read here, you know, where it's just been a bit stretched. Yeah, it's bleeding. So we'll definitely need some suturing. I don't like needles myself, but I really like suturing now. It's a little bit like trying to recreate a perfect picture. 
Okay, so I'm going to start now, okay? Okay, so I'm going to the skin, which is a very sensitive area. I have tried to numb it. When you get it right, I really enjoy seeing my handiwork. And so I take my time because this is what they're going to be living with for the rest of their life. And so I make sure I'm doing the best job that I possibly can. I'm just tying off. I'm not got the needle anymore, OK? Nicola's been absolutely unbelievable. Uh, absolutely incredible. <laughs> Nicola has completely smashed it. It was about an hour and a half before her other son's third birthday in the exact same room nearly three years ago. He's going to sleep. Yeah, lovely, isn't it? I've been counting my numbers as a newly qualified midwife, and this is my 20th birth. But every single birth, for me, it feels like the first time. Um, and it makes me fall in love with midwifery all over again. Emma is back on shift. Morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Hiya. Yeah, good, thanks. Earlier in the week, she was involved in her first theatre emergency. But the unpredictability of birth is something all midwives have experienced. And it had the cord around its neck four times, because I remember the midwife going one, two, three, four, and it looked like a scar. And the week before that, me and Claire Lawson had a lady who had an eclamptic fit. Mm. Oh, there's so many things that can happen, isn't there? Yeah. It's scary. It is but scary. we trained for it. I know. <laughs> but that, <laughs> that again, like, take my hat off. Like, <laughs> how much you have to be prepared for and how much you have to learn. And... It's me always... prepared for everyone. And then it's always that one person that you're like, no, she's low risk, it's going to be fine. And then she'll have, like, everything. There is much more that I can do and there is much more that I think is expected of me and I was absolutely thrown seeing that emergency so it's given me a, a, a reality check actually I think that that I do need to learn more, train more, watch more. Emma has requested additional training so she's joined a session led by midwife Kerry. So today we're going to want to talk about scribing. It's basically just a documentation of what happened, when it happened and who did it, because it will be asked of you in an emergency situation. Kerry is focusing on the role of an MCA in a theatre emergency. I always get worried. When I go into the room in an emergency, I always stand like a deer in headlights because I always think I'm going to get it wrong. It's really hard in that situation yeah. and there's like eight people in the room, there's stuff going on. I was in um, a section the other day with a lady that had a transverse baby, but I didn't scribe. Should I have? You have to write it how you think. OK. You don't have to write everything like the doctor's doing, like leg out, leg back in, arm out, because they try and rotate the baby, you know what I mean? I'm not supposed yeah. to write that, but it's from knife to skin, if the head comes, if the head doesn't come, and then when the baby comes. It's absolutely fascinating, isn't it? This is it just me. No, it is not. <laughs> <laughs> like, what you do is just phenomenal. Yeah, sometimes they do it with forceps as well. So you need to write when the forceps were applied, when the first pull was, second and third. If they get to three, they should not be doing any more. Okay. You are the MCA and you are responsible for quite a lot of things in theatre. Don't look at me like that, Gary. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, <laughs> you've all got the ability and you can all do it. And I want everyone to be able to fulfil their potential and your job role. And part of your job role is theatre. I actually do find it really helpful because, like you, it puts the absolute fear of God into me, the fact that I might have to scribe and go into an emergency. Like, as long as you hear it and can kind of... Yeah. ..kind of put it on yeah. paper. Don't be scared. Go forth and run that theatre. We can't do our job without you. Do you know what? Scribing training was actually really good. 
if an emergency situation happens, I do feel much more prepared than I did when I walked through the door this morning. I'm hoping I don't have to do it, not because um, I'm scared of scribing, but because I don't want a woman to be in an emergency situation. It's 5am and four days after being induced, Larissa is finally in active labour. That's it. That's yeah. it. Keep going, keep going, keep going. She's been cared for by midwife That's Jamie. It. Also at her side is fiance George and her sister Sophie. Well done, Lar. That's it. <sighs> yeah, that head has definitely come down now. All right. Yahoo. Now you just got to push like you mean it. That's it. That's it. That's it. You're moving, baby. Now. <sighs> Oh, this oh, is the no. last stretch now. Yeah, just got to get baby around the shoe bend. <sighs> all right, this is the hardest bit. It's all right, you can do it. Oh my God. You, you can, can do it. Can. <laughs> Larissa, who hasn't slept for days, is losing the strength to carry on. Larissa, yeah. you've come this far. You can do it, sweetheart. Okay, you are doing so well. You can do it. You, you can. I promise you. I can't do it. Yes, you can. You can, can. Larissa. Yes, Larissa, you can do it. You can do it, sweetheart. You're doing it. It is hard work to deliver babies, especially when they've been in labour for so many days already. When a mum is in labour, it's really important as midwives that we do encourage them to keep going, especially when they're feeling tired. So sometimes they might need a bit of guided help with that. Tough love almost, and we have to really help them through it. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I know, I know. No panic, it will happen. Okay. First time babies take a bit of work and a bit of time. Okay. You can do it. You can do it. That's it. Go on. Go on. And again. You can do it. You can do it. You're doing so well. You're doing it. Okay. You can do it. You can do it. The ordeal is also taking its toll on the baby. Yeah, I've just called for a second midwife, just because baby's heart rate is dipping a little bit when we're pushing. As is probably you are, baby's getting a little bit tired. So we might need to give you a bit of a helping hand. When a baby's heart rate dips, it can be a sign that they are in distress. So we really need to keep a close eye on this baby and we need to do something about it if it's not picking up. Um, because this baby may be delivered as a stillbirth, um, which is obviously not the outcome that anyone wants. That's it, keep pushing. Where are we With the situation becoming more serious, Jamie has called on the support of Labour Ward Coordinator, Foz. My body can't do any more. Day four of trying to get a baby out. Yeah, it's not funny. I can't do it. Don't funny with this part of the pregnancy no. there. A baby, they said. Yeah, I they don't talk to how hard it is. The plan is to transfer Larissa to theatre, where the team will attempt a forceps birth. Oh. Come on, George. For George, it's all become too much. You've done amazing. You've done all you can. You've done everything you need to. All right? It's a long process over four days. Yeah. I love you so much, okay? George, yeah. you okay to go to theatre? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Only George will be allowed into surgery to accompany Larissa for an assisted birth. See ya. First time mum Larissa has been rushed to theatre because her baby is in distress. Please. As well as fiancé George, midwife Jamie is also on hand to support Larissa. Jamie, all right, lovely. I'm here, I'm here. All right, I'm just making sure everything's ready. All right, I'm here, though. The team will first attempt to use forceps. It's 
hurting. Oh, yeah. Got a contraction building, I think. In order to birth the baby, they'll need to synchronise their efforts with Larissa's contractions. Go on, keep Come going, on. keep going, Larissa, keep going. Harder, harder, harder. Come on, Come on you, can harder, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Keep going, keep going, harder, keep going. Harder. That's it. Okay. It's gone. But the baby is not moving down the birth canal. The baby's head is still quite high, yeah. so they're not going to be able to apply the forceps. All attempts at a vaginal birth will cease. The team will now proceed with an emergency caesarean. This baby decided otherwise, yeah? Oh, no. But at least you're going to see, you're going to see the baby. It's yeah, on Yeah, hold well on. Forceps or instrumental delivery is unsuccessful and they make the decision to go for a C-section. This has to happen straight away because they've already put the baby through possibly some trauma by trying to apply the forceps or that woman has been pushing for a long period of time. So if a forceps is unsuccessful, we need to get that baby out straight away. It'll be worth it in the end. Yeah. All right. <laughs> then you'll be able to get a rest. <laughs> After days of waiting, Larissa and George are just minutes away from meeting their baby. They're starving, they're kids. You okay? They're all kids. They're all kids. That hurt. I feel the pressure. Doesn't hurt, does it? Does it hurt? Oh, I feel the pressure. No? Good. Can we lift the baby up if possible so Mum and Dad can see the sex? Congratulations. Oh, Bob, it's a boy. Yeah. <laughs> My mum said it was so happy. Yeah, it's a boy. <laughs> But the baby's oxygen levels are dangerously low. Yeah, he's fine, he's a bit low. And the team must urgently clear his airways of fluid. Can you just turn him? Turn him to that side slightly. So we can actually get him. It is a good rub. Yeah. It is a good rub and a cry. Come on. It's a good time. Is it on, gentlemen? Yes. Yeah. Okay, then. Get yeah, the feet. Come on. No, feet in. Here. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Give us a nice big cry. Yeah. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Finally, the silence is broken. You okay? That's A to four. Going up. Yeah. Pinking up now. Good heart rate. Nice and pink. I'm not worried. Oh, you have been nothing but trouble. I don't know how you're still going, babe. Honestly, well done. If I stand up, I'm going to fall over. I'll bring him over in a second. Thank you. When a baby is born after such a long labour, it's such a joyful thing to see, despite their labour may not go into plan or them not be getting the birth that they wanted. The fact that you've got a healthy baby at the end of it and a happy mum and dad, then that's perfect. You can't ask for anything more than that. I'm so proud of you. He's coming. You ready? Oh, hi, mummy. Hello. Can we have a cup of your dad here? Yeah, please. Say hello, Daddy. Hello. Yeah. Hello. You look like your mummy. Yeah. Well, your nanny and grand are going to love you, aren't they? Yeah. Look at them beautiful eyes. Huh? Huh? You're such a good boy, aren't you? 
a little bit much, isn't it? You're amazing. Love you. Would you like some fry and a custard? Uh, yes, please. Cheers. You're welcome, Daddy. Thank you very much. Yep. Cheers. It's lunchtime on the postnatal ward, and Emma's halfway through another busy shift. It's more than a day's work. Clean a bed, watch your baby being born, get someone's dinner. I just lost my space again talking to you. Emma is collecting lunch for a mum she last saw two days into a four-day labour. Hello. You are very welcome. Larissa is recovering on the ward following her difficult birth. How much hair? Mm. Popped out as well. He? Yeah. Oh. Little Noah. Little boy popped oh, out. Little boy popped out. What a surprise. So what happened? Because last time I saw you, you were breathing oh, and so swaying. Yeah. <laughs> Getting on with it and then it was only meant to be a couple of hours. And then it just got to the probably 10 centimetres dilated and he went coming down. What? Yeah. And they were even in theatre, they were like, there's no space to get the forceps around his head because oh. we went to a C-section to get him out. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> We literally went the plan, but... every room. Yeah, we went through it all. Nice relief when they showed him to us. Yeah. It's like, oh, finally. Oh, he's opening his eyes. He's waking up. <laughs> oh, look that little smile then. My jaw nearly hit the floor when I walked past that room and saw Larissa and George in there. I thought I'd gone back to last week. <laughs> but that is a beautiful boy that they've got. Nice to meet him. Yeah, <laughs> he's going to be here all night. Yeah, I'll pop in and see before. That's London, lovely. Thank you so much. See you later. Take care. Bye. Bye. When the baby's born, most of the focus shifts to the baby. But you can't forget about the mum. And Larissa has been through so, so much. And, you know, it's testament to this team and how brilliant they are that they have got her back every step of the way. They're amazing. And now I'm starting to believe that I'm part of that team as well. <laughs>